dear audience, I sh heard I should speak about Fritz Kreisler. I even know the year when he was born, 1875. And he grew up in a, in a typical Viennese cultured, cultivated um, household. His father was a doctor and had a um, pri private quote, an amateur quote. In these days uh, in Vienna, we had some 300, 400 private uh, chamber music associations, so to say. And uh, Fritz would sit under the piano, he wrote in, in his biography, and listen to all the Brahms, Schubert, Mozart, and so on. Um, and he, he got a very good education, musical education. Imagine uh, his teacher for, for counterpoint and harmony was Anton Bruckner at the conservatory. Uh, he made, as a boy, a huge career in America, but then the father thought, oh, my son should go into a more respectable profession. He should <laughs> become a doctor as I am. And, but Bill Roth, the famous doctor who, who played, uh, usually came, came to this private quartet evenings, he said, please, let him do what he wants to do. But the father insisted on no. Then, if he is not a good doctor, he should go to the army. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But finally, uh, he was convinced, the father was convinced by his friends to let the boy go in the musical direction. And it's amazing. He... <laughs> Kreisler wanted to, to apply for a job at the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra. And the father sent him to the Vienna Woods, to a country pub, and there he had to play in the evenings for uh, logis and, and meals. Yeah? Uh, so the father didn't pay him the studies. No, he had to earn his money himself. Uh, the problem was that he failed to come to the orchestra for this, they said he has too individual a sound. <laughs> and uh, uh, that was the, I tell you, that was the permanent vibrato he had. Joachim, the great friend of Johannes Brahms, would play with little vibrato, and that was the usual style of playing. And then Fritz Kreisler came with his electricity in the left hand. So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm losing myself in. Let's start. We, we will uh, make a little tour in 18 minutes around the world, yeah? Uh, <laughs> we, we play three pieces. We start in Vienna, go to Hungary with Gypsy Caprice, and to China with Tambourin Chinois, and then we make a rest in America. We start with... Leave his life, which is love's sorrow.
uh, America uh, was uh, actually the country in which Greisel uh, spent most of his life and he liked America very much. And you might wonder why he wrote so many small, little pieces, short pieces, two minutes, two and a half minutes, three minutes. In America, there was the time of the growing recording industry. And of course, in the first days of recording, apparently it was not possible to record longer pieces. So he wrote these pieces just for recordings. And of course, uh, with the recordings, his reputation grew and more or less, uh, if I trust books I have read, in the second half of his life, all his concerts were outsold. And actually, most of the concerts were charity concerts. And uh, let me tell you, it's very late. And uh, no, but <laughs> I think it's so typical for Greisler, one has to know this, this little anecdote. He was married uh, to Harriet, an American woman, and she was the strong person in the marriage, really. He himself said that, yeah. Anyway, they organized many charity projects. For, remember, it was First World War in, in Europe, so uh, students in Berlin had no coal to heat their rooms, or children in Vienna had no milk to drink, and so he uh, organized uh, these projects with, his, with the help of his wife and many, many more. So basically, he, left, he lived on, he just spent as much money as he needed for, for life, and everything else was put into charity projects. And in, in, in New York, one day, imagine, might have been November, it was snowing already, he went shopping with his wife, and. Uh, went up and down in the morning, and at a special corner they saw a street fiddler. And after they had passed him the third time, Harriet said, look, Fritz, this man, he has nothing in his head, and I'm sure he has not had breakfast yet. Let's take him out for breakfast. It's a colleague of yours, so... Yeah. <laughs> and Fritz, of course, oh, yeah, good, yeah, it's a good idea, yeah. No, no, I have a better idea, said Harriet. Uh, take his violin and fill his head. I take him out for breakfast, meanwhile. <laughs> <laughs> now we play syncopation, which is, as I said, a, a, a ragtime, but with some sort of Viennese touch, I would say.
this is to come back to the end, end for the end of the concert. La Gitana. Marche Miniature Vienna. Noir. Uh, you know, the Austrian army in the monarchy times, we lost all the wars. But still one general said, yes, but I think our, our soldiers, they are the prettiest, prettiest of all. Yeah. <laughs> so this piece shows a little bit of this kind of salon elegance of, of soldiers in, in the monarchy. Thank you. 